Hello Thistledown gang and welcome back to my channel. If you've already been here, if not, hi, I'm Hedge and uh, this is my channel and this is hopefully the first in a series of videos um, that will be detailing the becoming of a new LARP character. If you don't know what LARP is, um, it stands for Live Action Roleplay. Um, I already have a video in which I explain what that is, how it works, at least mostly in Germany, and I will link that up here and down in the descriptions. I've been meaning to make a video or a series of videos like this pretty much since I started this channel. Now, I have just a day ago placed the order for my very first Drachenfest ticket. I've been LARPing for 15 years now, but I've never been at Drachenfest. I usually go to Mythodia, which is, uh, those are the two biggest events in Germany. Both of them go for, for about a week and uh, I, I'm doing both next year, which means two weeks of LARPing in the summer. It's gonna be glorious and exhausting, but mostly glorious. Uh, so. Now I have half a year to actually get this character going and she is quite stuff intense, stuff, stuff heavy, she has a lot of stuff. So <laughs> I thought the best way to do this, myself accountable, is, uh, would be to, to make videos about it and here we are. I'm making a video about how I make my characters. So these videos will hopefully serve two purposes. Uh, one, showing how I personally build characters because there are as many ways to build characters as there are uh, people who build characters. Maybe it will help someone who has no idea how to do that or maybe it will just amuse people who already build characters and who want to see how other people do that. I'm actually interested in things like that. And to holding myself accountable and that's where you come in. So you might want to hit that subscribe button if you haven't yet uh, or that notification bell or whatever it is um, to see how it's going. Maybe this uh, series will only annoy people, maybe it will help someone, I hope it helps someone, but it also will help holding me accountable to actually getting that kit done so ideally I would uh, get a new video out every fortnight or so, but um, realistically it will be about once a month. The general idea is I will show you something that I'm making, like a tutorial or the stuff I already have for her because that's already two boxes, give or take. Um, we have little props because she will have a lot of that. Um, soft kit, which means clothing in large speak, or just like in this video, uh, draw a little design for her. She will also have a book that I'm partially going to, sign, uh, to design before the event and not just on the event, which is the idea is uh, to, to make a diary of sorts. I'll do that and probably in the voiceover, as long as it's obvious what I'm doing and I don't have to explain too much, so so that it will still be useful for people. Um, so in the voiceover I plan on talking about the implications and the theoretical aspects of building a character, uh, which is the actual character and not just the visual design. But enough of the just talkery, I just said I am going to show you my visual design progress or at least parts of that and that's what we're going to do now the way i start the visual design of a character is to think about what i want other people to see okay so no sometimes i start with a single piece of equipment that i desperately want to use but aside from that that is my modus operandi but let me elaborate labs usually last between one and five days everything has to develop so quickly from first impressions to emotional connections that we need cliches and tropes in our visuals to tell things about a character to get that information out to our fellow make-believers as quickly as possible. 
Just like in real life, but far less nuanced, we communicate by way of choice of dress, and we need to be aware of this communication. By a single or maybe two or three glances, I need to be able to decide if this character might be useful to me, sympathetic to my cause or character, compatible or incompatible, and both are equally important, and a decent antipathy is worth its weight in gold. This might seem superficial at first, but most of us are still highly visual beings, and in LARP it is actually useful and to a certain degree wanted or even required to judge a book by its cover. But onto this specific character. I want people to see that she's adventurous at the drop of her hat, and thus I give her one, and few hats are as adventurous as the tricorn. But thanks to especially one certain franchise, uni uh, unicorns, yeah, uh, tricorns are incredibly linked to pirates. So I need to distract people from that and build in clues to break the pirate cliche because she is not a pirate. Short tangent, I like to draw at least a sketch of under things before I go on with the upper layers of clothing for design to get a feeling what the whole outfit entails in its entirety. In this case I'm going so far as to plan period appropriate and please hear this as being in huge air quotes, I'll dive into that in the respective video, uh, underpinnings. Stay tuned for the stays in either episode 2 or 3, I'm not quite sure yet in which, but it is coming. But back to the overall design. The whole design is obviously heavily inspired by mid to late 1700s fashion, especially colonial, but so are a lot of pirate cliches. There are a few other influences there as well, conquistadors for example and a dash of renaissance France, but mostly I looked at American independence war enactment and wouldn't stop drooling and so here we are. The tamed rubbed braid is something that is more restricted than you'd expect from a pirate and that is break number one. Then there's a severe lack of anchors, mermaids and other maritime imagery and that would be break two, but instead we get a lot of other trinkets and lucky charms about her the majority of which I won't even draw because these things have to grow and can't be rigidly designed in, to imply her superstitious and even partially religious nature. In the corner of her mouth hangs a small pipe to give off the vibe of someone who very casually leans smirkingly against walls even if there are no walls to talk about around and doesn't speak too loudly because, you know, otherwise the pipe would fall out of her mouth. The character wears pants that are on top of it, tucked into her boots, which in a somewhat historical-ish setting is usually a sign for a non-traditional female adventure and generous kicking of hindquarters. The combination of high boots and already scratched protective leather around her thighs are supposed to hint at the fact that she faces occupational hazards that aren't necessarily part of a job behind a desk. Um, that these protective layers are around her lower body rather than her torso implies that it is protection from the environment rather than people and a fighting situation because otherwise she would protect her throat and maybe her chest. The loose waistcoat and partially unbuttoned shirt give the viewer the idea that she isn't very interested in her appearance in general and might be from a lower class, especially as soon as there are stains and dirt involved, which in my opinion is a relevant part of every LARP character's design. The scarf around her neck can be used to quickly obscure her face and together with the open shirt and overall careless way of dress, it is rather unlikely to mean that her health is frail. Which, which would be a useful thing to wear a scarf for. Her coloring is mostly gray and washed out browns with some red details thrown in, but it's a red that is neither glamorous nor that sexy or lively or ominous. It is the red of dried blood from a bar fight, shriveled up amanita mushrooms and bricks. And it's something that can make one stand out when born with confidence, but that isn't too flashy. So you can still blend into the crowd if you if you need to or want to. Now, when it comes to character design in general, I ask myself in which categories I put the characters, and by that I mean things like Hogwarts houses, Evertonations, animals, vampire clans, and what would be in their fridge if they lived nowadays and had one. This mostly impacts behavior, which is once again fodder for another episode, but it sometimes also affects the looks. The relevant category here would be what animal would she be, because it is very easy and has the most influence on her design. And it would be a rat. 
she's a scavenger, she's fairly social but cautious. And the most obvious red hint would be the long tail or braid, which would be my nape of the neck dreadlocks, wrapped in fabric to emulate A, said red tail, and B, the colonial American male's hairdo, at least partially. There's also her coloring, which is undefined neutral shades that blend in, but with a flash of something more, maybe an aggressive tendency, or something like that, that is attributed to rats, which is absolute bogus. Through the red, that makes it a little less mousy and a little more present. Maybe I'll go as far as to hint at rat's ears with the things I pinned to her hat, but we'll see about that, I'll have to experiment on that. Now that I've told you about what I want people to see, I'll tell you what you can't see quite yet. Fetch isn't just her name, well, it's not her true name anyway, but uh, once again that is for another video, but also her occupation. She is a video game fetch quest personified. Tears of a virgin siren? Check. Shavings of a satyr's horn? Yeah. Unicorn placenta? Sure. Mucus from a rare frog from an oasis on an otherwise frozen peak somewhere far far off? Yeah. Sure, sure, I can get that. Any other weird obscure ingredient for your alchemical endeavors? Yeah, she's got a... or at least she will try. And she simply can't refuse the challenge. She also likes collecting things. And with that bit of info about this character whose journey into existence is the excuse to finally make a series about character creation, I'll leave you for now. Thank you so much for watching. Have a lovely day, week, uh, month, whatever time shall pass until we meet again. Let me know in the comments how you think about the finding of visual design clues, um, as, as I'm calling them, and what uh, Hogwarts houses your characters are, or what, what animal you would mostly um, associate them with. Have, yeah, have a wonderful time. And I'll see you next time, hopefully soon. Bye.